On the 5th of October 2023, I boarded the ferry from Dover to France. Just me and my self-built camper van ready for an epic five week road trip across Europe. Whilst you may think you've already seen this video, this is a different take on my longer travel vlogs where I narrate my way across Europe, giving you a behind the scenes look. I'd spent endless hours planning this trip and I was so excited to finally be setting off. In 2022 I did a short road trip around Europe with my tiny VW Caddy and whilst it was only two weeks I had such an amazing time that I knew I needed to plan another trip outside of the UK. For anyone who's not been out of the UK in your camper van I highly recommend it. Places are so much more welcoming to camper vans with plenty of amazing free stops, service points and of course some incredible locations to explore. My main goal for this trip was to head into the mountains. Whilst I love all that the outdoors has to offer, stunning coasts, dense forests, sandy beaches, wide open landscapes, I seem to have developed a strong connection with mountains in the last few years. Whilst in their presence I feel so small and all of the real world problems seem to disappear. So for the start of the trip I decided to head straight to Switzerland. With a few service station sleepovers and plenty of good playlists and podcasts, I eventually made it into Switzerland. My first few destinations were in a very touristy area and so I opted to stay at a campsite to avoid being fined if I tried to sleep in the areas where it was not allowed. I found a stunning campsite on the shores of Lake Brienz, near to the town of Interlaken. Even though it was October, the sun was still shining and it was still relatively warm. I think it was in the low 20s most days. So I took my chance for a swim in this stunning lake and it did not disappoint. After three days of non-stop driving, a dip in the cold lake was just what I needed to refresh myself ready for the next few days of exploring Switzerland. So join me as I walk you through my five weeks in Europe. I'll show you the good, the bad, the breakdowns, all the best spots to visit, as well as places to avoid. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more adventures like this one. And also leave a comment with where you'd love to explore in Europe. Now back to the trip where it was time to visit the first country. Welcome to Switzerland. Switzerland is one of those countries where it just doesn't seem real. And until you experience it with your own two eyes, you will not believe that some of these places exist. Now of course, a lot of the photos you see online of these stunning places are highly edited and usually only show you a few specific angles of a location. And there are plenty of places on my trip that I visited that I was a little disappointed with compared to some of the epic photos you see online. This place is stunning, I can tell why it's so busy. That's not to say these places aren't stunning because they definitely deserve the attention they get. This is the town of Lutebrunnen, famous for the huge waterfall falling from the side of the cliff and towering over the town. The waterfall itself is quite impressive but the massive queues and the huge amount of tourists sometimes takes away from the spectacular little town. I opted for a short walk up through the forest and enjoyed a little more of the peaceful side of this stunning area. The next day I drove from the campsite and into the town of Grindelwald. It took me about an hour to find a parking space suitable for my sized van, but I eventually hopped on the gondola and up to the mountains, where some jaw-dropping views were awaiting. There's plenty of things to do up in the mountains here, but I decided to do a short hike to Lake Bacalpsi. That tall mountain that you see is called Jungfrau, which is also known as the top of Europe. It is the highest peak in Europe, standing at 13,642 feet tall. It is also one of the most accessible places with trains and cable cars taking you up to the top of the mountains all around this area. However, this accessibility comes at a price. I paid 60 euros for a return gondola trip up the mountain, and whilst it does offer spectacular views for little effort, I'm not sure I would choose to spend that amount again unless I had bigger plans up in the mountains. 
After visiting the top of Europe, it was time to move on to another area of Switzerland. I made my way through the windy mountain roads, the quaint Swiss villages, past epic mountain views and to one of my favourite park ups of the whole trip. And this is why wild camping is better than campsites. Look at this spot. It is next to a fairly busy road, but because there's a rock separating the road and the van, it's actually pretty quiet. We can hear the lake down there, the river. Um, but this spot is insane and the sun has just gone down. So everything looks real nice right now. I soaked in the mountain views with the autumn colors starting to appear, the river running down below and the sunset glow. This is why I love travelling in a van. To call this place my home for the night was an absolute pleasure and will always be one of my favourite things about van life. Creating a new view outside of my window every day never gets old. As the sun rose over the peaks of the mountains the next morning, I knew this was going to be a lovely day. I decided to have a relaxing day and enjoy these mountains for just a little bit longer. I think it's very easy when you're travelling with a set plan and itinerary to just visit lots of places to tick them off the list. But I love to schedule in days to do nothing and just really take in the surroundings before moving on to another destination. But clearly being alone by myself in the mountains got a bit too much and I did something unexpected. So what started as a chill day ended with a haircut um, that I gave myself because I bought some clippers and wanted to see if I could cut my hair. I actually don't think I did a very bad job but now I'm covered in hair and it's all itchy and horrible and I don't have a shower so... Um, I'm going to walk to a lake and see if it's swimmable and have a little rinse off. This was one of those spontaneous moments that turned into one of my favourite spots on the trip. I walked to this lake with no expectations and with only seeing the route on Google Maps. I just arrived at the lake and it is insane. I don't know if you can tell the colour of that water, but it is crazy. Um, I haven't even worked out how cold it is yet, but if I want to go for a swim because the water's coming directly from a glacier up there, so it's going to be a little cold. When I arrived, I was absolutely blown away by the scenes in front of me. Whilst I really wanted to attempt to swim, the water was freezing cold and there was a weird slippery clay on the edge which made things very difficult. But I did manage to rinse my freshly cut hair, so that's a bonus. Turquoise blue water, mountains all around, glaciers up above, and barely any people here. If you're in this area of Switzerland, I 100% recommend a trip to this lake. At this place. You'll find it along the Susten Pass, which is the road I then continued my way along and on to the next destination. With more and more winding roads and epic views, this will be one of the most scenic drives you'll ever do. Good morning, I have just arrived at the parking for Lake Crestacy, I think it's called. Um, I'm going to do a walk that involves two lakes and a gorge, which should be pretty cool.
water in this lake is so clear it's kind of creepy that you can see literally everything in the bottom like all of the trees and the dirt I mean it's like good that you can see but also weird that you can see because it's just so not normal to just be able to see right to the bottom of the lake the second lake was just as clear and definitely looks like a summer hotspot for a refreshing swim. With still a lot more of my hike left to complete, I didn't stop for long and I continued along to the Rhine Gorge. There was a small viewing platform for this viewpoint over the river and the gorge, but I was a little disappointed at the fact that this was the only spot you could see down to the gorge below as the rest of the hike was through the forest so you couldn't really see anything. Once I finished the hike, I headed back to the very first lake, which was fairly close to where I had parked, and went for a refreshing swim. I would be lying if I said the deep, clear waters didn't freak me out just a little bit, but I decided not to look down and just keep swimming. Well, that was definitely a better swim attempt than yesterday. It actually wasn't too cold, I think with October, because it's the end of summer, um, unless it's obviously a glacier lake, <laughs> then uh, waters are fairly warm at the minute. So yeah, that was quite a nice swim. Well, this is tonight's spot, uh, pretty secluded in the middle of some dirt track that I was a bit scared to drive down so I'm hoping I can get back out tomorrow um, I did read the reviews on Park for Night and they were saying it's a bit steep and narrow I was like oh I'll just risk it when you start you can't go back the only thing is there's a really tight corner on the top of the road so I think I'm gonna not go the way I need to go and go straight out and turn around somewhere else because it is tight That evening I found myself parked in the middle of the forest, with a stream down below and a cool suspension bridge hiding around the corner. I had a peaceful night in the forest, soaking up the last evening in Switzerland, as the next day I would be moving into Italy. I'm now about to go over the Splugen Pass, um, which means that I'm now going from Switzerland into Italy. The Splugen Pass is one of many mountain passes that connects Italy to Switzerland. Consisting of many hairpin bends and incredible views, it is an amazing drive. I opted for this route through to Italy as I wanted to visit a specific lake that was on the Italian side of this mountain pass. Lake Montespluga. I spent the afternoon basking in the sunshine, knowing that the temperatures are about to start dropping, especially when I'm this high up in the mountains. I spent the next morning here and after a lovely day I started making my way east across northern Italy. That was until disaster struck. I had broken down, but not only did I break down, I also almost got scammed. After leaving my van at a garage for them to diagnose the problem, I received these messages from the garage, along with photos that I assumed was my engine. I had a full breakdown as I thought I was about to have a really expensive and lengthy head gasket repair on the van in a foreign country and I really couldn't decide what to do. I hate making decisions as it is, um, when it's something that is so, like, like, Everything I own is in that bag and it's quite scary to not know what's happening with it and it being in a different country. It's just quite hard to deal with, especially being by myself. I am now going to go to the workshop where the bag is and 
get some more of my things because I just quickly packed a bag with a few items so I need to go and get some more clothes and some more, some more of my things. Long story short, once I tried to investigate what was happening with the van and to go to collect some more things, Garrett randomly said that the van was fine and that it wasn't my van that they took apart. So a few wasted days later, and luckily only a few hundred euros spent, I was back on the road. I made it to the Dolomites, finally. <laughs> After a very stressful week, um, I have finally made it to the Dolomites. The weather forecast for my next few days in the Dolomites was not looking great. Lots of rain and lots of cloud makes it hard to see the mountains, which is what I came here to see. But I tried to stay hopeful that I would enjoy my time here regardless. The next morning there was a glimmer of hope and I noticed some blue skies. about to visit Lake Miserina, I think it's called. Um, the town really doesn't like campers, I've seen so many signs, don't camp here, and even all of the car parks have height barriers, which is really annoying. I explored the small lake town of Miserina with an eye-catching yellow hotel standing on its shores. It was a very picturesque little spot. This afternoon I'm heading up the toll road to I think one of the most popular spots where everyone goes in their van and I've got really high expectations and I think I should maybe lower them um, because of how the weather is. I drove up the windy mountain roads to one of the most famous spots in the Dolomites. From this car park you can visit lots of epic viewpoints as well as the famous Three Peaks. There was a certain spot that I've been wanting to visit for so long I couldn't decide whether to hike there as soon as I arrive or wait until the next day. Okay, let's get going. I think I'm about to be literally inside a cloud right now. But I knew it was a fairly short hike so I may as well double my chances of a cloudless view and go twice. The little mound you see in the distance there is called the Cadini de Miserina viewpoint. It's become very popular on social media in the last few years and a great spot for van lifers as you can stay in the nearby car park overnight. Plus there are some very moderate and accessible hikes in this area too. I waited for a little bit to see if the clouds would clear but after an hour I decided to call it a day and head back to the van. Unaware of what was to come the next morning. I woke up early eager to catch the sunrise. And this sunrise will be one that I remember forever. I think I walked a little bit too fast up that hill for seven o'clock in the morning, but oh my god. You can see the colours in the sky right now. It is insane. The whole sky lit up pink and the sunlight illuminated the tips of the mountains. While this may not be the viewpoint, I mean, you get the exact same view because I see the group of people down there waiting to get their photos and here there is no one. The, I think the cloud is coming in now because the sun has just disappeared, but I'm going to get the drone up and um, yeah, take a look at this. One of the reasons the Dolomites are so famous is because this area has some really unique rock formations. From the viewpoint, you can see why. The peaks are so jaggedy and pointy, which you don't see very often. I was worried before visiting the Dolomites that they wouldn't live up to the hype and that it would be somewhere that's better in photos than in real life, but that could not be further from the truth. The reality is even better than the photos and videos can do it justice. But soon enough the cloud rolled back in and I took this chance to head back to the van. As this parking is at the top of a toll road, I only had up to 24 hours here. So that afternoon I drove a little bit further down the mountains. It's surprising how quickly the temperatures increased the further I drove down. I ended up having a very chilled afternoon by the side of the river, grateful for some sunshine to warm me up.
the shorter days and colder temperatures made it harder to be outside all day, so it's important to find ways to slow down and enjoy the time spent inside the van. One of my favourite things to do on cosy rainy days is to make coffee. While some may think this is a bit of an extravagant setup to have coffee in the morning, I love that it makes me slow down and appreciate the art of making a good cup of coffee. After a rainy morning, I made my way back up the mountains and found a good park up, nestled in between the tall trees, ready for a hike the next day. It's time to head on a hike this morning. Well, I say this morning, I wanted to leave pretty early. It's already like half 10, I think. Yeah, it's half 10. So I need to get move on because um, I think there is some rain forecast. It's already a bit kind of drizzly, um, but I'm really hoping that it's not gonna affect the hike because this hike is to, it's to a lake and obviously there's mountains around we're in the Dolomites, but the main focal point and the reason that I wanted to visit this lake is because it is surrounded by large trees and in the autumn that's the trees like here you can kind of see a few where they turn completely orange so um yeah that's why i want to go i'm really hoping it's nice and like orangey autumny um maybe the cloud will even make it um even more kind of moody and misty so i need to get a move on because it's a pretty long hike i think it's like 12 kilometers or something and i'll probably catch you halfway there because i'm going to put the camera in my bag because apparently the start of the hike is pretty steep so let's get going this is largo federa it may be a small lake but surrounded by orange larch trees and towering mountains it is a must visit place during autumn in the dolomites Whilst you can usually see an oddly shaped pointy mountain in the background of the lake, today it was covered in mist and rain, which I think made it even more dramatic and the perfect place to visit in the autumn. This lake is insane, the orange colours, amazing. This lake was the last stop on my Dolomites trip and it was certainly a great way to round up my time in Italy. My next destination is a country I've never been to before and I was very excited to finally be able to explore Slovenia. I arrived yesterday but it was so rainy that I stayed in the van all day and I came to this campsite last night uh, because wild camping in Slovenia is not very tolerated. I'm about to head and explore a bridge, a waterfall and a river viewpoint and the river is very flooded and overflown. So let's go and explore some of Slovenia. However, this was another reality of travelling in the autumn time. Because of all the rain that had fallen over the last few days, the river was very flooded. And what is usually a crystal clear turquoise river is now a milky looking, fast flowing river. This is the Soka River. There are many stunning viewpoints and rickety suspension bridges hanging over this river. In the summer it is a haven for water sports, such as kayaking and rafting. 
However, during the winter you definitely would not want to go for a dip in here. I made my way along the river to visit a waterfall. Although part of the path was flooded, I just about made it to the cave-like section where the water tumbled over the edge of the rocks. I then walked across one of the many suspension bridges and took in the surrounding views of the mountains. I think I made a friend every time I arrive. Hello. Hello. After departing my campsite and saying goodbye to my new friend, I drove up into the mountains of the Triglav National Park. I stopped at the top of the Vrsic Pass to attempt to hike. It was already fairly late in the afternoon and I wasn't actually planning to do this hike but although freezing cold it was actually dry weather so I wanted to make the most of it. I love that travelling in autumn means you get to experience three seasons. I had summer in Switzerland, autumn in the Dolomites and now there is a dusting of snow starting to appear in some areas. I knew I wouldn't have time to complete this hike but I enjoyed the views and the snowy mountains. I tried to get the drone up to um, shoot the cloud inversion over there but it's so windy in this section that it was struggling. After two days of non-stop rain there was finally a break in the forecast. I woke up early eager to catch an epic sunrise at the Lake Bled viewpoint. It was quite a steep but short hike to the top of the viewpoint overlooking the lake and the iconic little island in the middle. I'm sure you've at some point seen this lake on Instagram as it's very popular with photographers. I too wanted my chance at capturing this lake. The weather conditions weren't the most ideal for an epic sunrise shot as it was too cloudy to even see the peaks of the mountains in the background, but I was still pretty happy with some of the shots I managed to capture. I also just remembered I didn't fly the drone whilst I was up there, which is pretty annoying. Um, I'm actually not sure if it's allowed, but I was too busy making coffee and getting photos. I'll put some photos here because they look so good. And it's so hard to like film, take photos, film for my phone because the main videos I make are on TikTok, so I film on my phone, film for this video, film, take photos on my camera. So it's really hard to do all of it at once, but... Um, oh, look at this. I'd heard of a hidden gem in Austria that I wanted to check out. In the middle of the forest below the Austrian Alps is a natural thermal pool. This pool only fills at certain times of the year and due to lots of rain recently I knew it would be full. Whilst the water wasn't boiling hot, the outside temperatures were below 5 degrees which made it feel quite warm inside the water. It was pleasant enough for a 5 minute soak. It was such a surreal feeling to be basically swimming in a heated river in the middle of the forest. What a way to start the day in a warm pool in the middle of the forest in Austria. Sadly I can film very much because it's already so busy. I tried to go at 7am to beat the crowd, but it's clearly a super popular spot with the locals. Anyway, it's very cold out now, so time, coffee and breakfast as always. If you're visiting Austria in the spring or autumn, I definitely recommend a visit here. It was then time for another country, and this is another spot that wasn't originally on my list of places to visit, but turned into one of my favourite hikes of the trip. I started with a walk along the edge of Lake Gosausi. I then decided to continue the walk up to a smaller lake. The hike itself was amazing, through snowy forests with the mountains towering above. I'm 
actually really glad I found this hike. It started off very nice, one day along the lake, really flat, and now it's got pretty steep. But I'm going to keep going because if, even if it's a nice long hike, I probably just won't do the hike I do tomorrow because I wasn't really planning to do this hike today. But the weather's nice, so why not? This lake is insane, and the weather is perfect. So it's creating like the best reflections. And I've tried to take some photos, but I need a wider lens to get a better landscape shot. But still pretty cool. And I'm tempted to fly the drone, but my drone is kind of broken, so the gimbal like doesn't go all the way up. So you won't really be able to see the mountain. So it's kind of pointless. Once I reached the second lake, I was blown away with the incredible reflections on the water. The next day I had a quick visit to the picturesque town of Hallstatt, but to be honest it wasn't my favourite place to visit as it was quite touristy and only really popular for one specific spot in the town. But it was then time to start the drive back towards the UK with one final stop in the south of Germany. But it wasn't quite the amazing Sunrise Mountain Lake visit that I was hoping for to finish off the trip. So I did actually make it up for sunrise at the lake. I mean, it has been a morning already and it's only like seven o'clock. Firstly, my windscreen was completely frozen because it rained last night and then it was in the minus. And I have no de-ice so I had to scrape all that off. Then I tried to park in the place that I parked at before, which is a lay-by about 20, 30 minute walk from the lake because all of the car parks at the lake have height barriers. The lay-by was closed off, so I had to park like 45 minute walk away. Practically ran here. Now the sun's rising, so <laughs> enjoy. The sun is at a completely wrong angle for a sunrise and I tried to check it yesterday to see if it was coming behind the mountain or to the side. Clearly I don't know how to read the forecast very well because I think it's coming behind the mountain which is not great. <laughs> I just realised I've walked way too far and I'm literally at the other end of the lake now. And I, I kept walking thinking I wasn't at the right spot that I wanted to be at. And I've walked bloody past it, I think. I'm pretty sure the sun is rising behind the mountain and I'm really annoyed because this was supposed to be the last epic place to visit and I came for sunrise, so it was epic. I also brought my things to make it coffee. I brought the stove, I brought the coffee, I brought the nano presto to make the coffee. And I didn't bring a lighter to get the stove lit, so I'm really annoyed. After clambering up the icy cold rock, I said goodbye to the mountains, sad that my time here in the Alps was now over. That's the end of the video. Cut!